Okay, class, today we're in section 9.5 extension. Graph quadratic functions in vertex form. Graph quadratic functions in vertex form. Key vocabulary, vertex form. You have graph quadratic functions in standard form. Quadratic functions can also be written in vertex form. Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K where a cannot be zero. In this form, the vertex of the graph can easily be determined. Key concept, graph of vertex form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The graph of y equals a times x minus h squared plus k is the graph of y is equal to a squared translated h units horizontally and k units vertically. Characteristics of the graph of y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The vertex is h k. The vertex is h comma k. The vertex is h comma k. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to h. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to h. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to h. The graph opens up if a is positive and the graph opens down if a is negative. Okay, your original graph is the blue one, y equals a times x squared. Your new graph is in the red after it has been translated h units horizontally, h units horizontally, and k units vertically, k units vert vertically. So over this way and up in this case, hk. Notice hk is the vertex. So that means h is the axis of symmetry. That's the x value. Example one, graph a quadratic function in vertex form. Graph y is equal to a negative one, if you want to say there's a one there, but a negative times x plus two squared plus three. Solution, step one, identify the values of a, h, and k. Identify the values of a, h, and k. a is equal to a negative 1. h is equal to a negative 2. And k is equal to 3. Because a is less than 0, or because a is negative, the parabola will open downward. Draw the axis of symmetry at x is equal to a negative 2. X is a negative 2, negative 1, negative 2. X is a symmetry. That's what you draw. Plot the vertex. The vertex would be H and K. So it's going to be a negative 2 and 3. Negative 2 and 3. That's my K value right there. Negative 2 and 3. So that's my vertex. Now plot four points. Evaluate the function for two X values less than the x coordinate of the vertex. All right, now since my vertex is a negative two, two numbers less than that would then be a negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. But they chose to use a negative three and a negative five. So now you take the negative three, plug it back into the original equation, and when you do that, you end up with a positive 2. A negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. A negative 1 squared is a positive 1. A positive 1 times the negative on the outside, that's a negative 1. And a negative 1 plus 3 is 2. You do the same trick down here. A negative 5 plus 2 is equal to a negative 3. A negative 3 squared is a positive 9. A positive 9 times 
a negative ends up being a negative 9. A negative 9 plus 3 ends up being a negative 6. So plot the points negative 3, 2 and negative 5 and negative 6 and their reflections. That's how they got four points. And their reflections. Negative 1, 2 and 1, negative 6 in the axis of symmetry. Step 5, draw a parabola through the plotted points and you are finished. Okay, now if you're wondering how they ended up with h being a negative 2 and not the positive 2 you see there, it's because remember it says minus h, minus h. Don't forget negative means opposite, so opposite. What's opposite of a positive 2? A negative 2. That's how they ended up with the negative 2 there. Because in the formula, you get y is equal to a times x minus h, minus h. So if it's positive, it's going to be negative. If this were negative, that would end up being positive. Example 2, graph a quadratic function. Graph y is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 11. Solution, step 1. Write the function in vertex form by completing the square. Write the function in vertex form by completing the square. First, write the original uh, function. First, write the original function. Next, prepare to complete the square. In other words, they're going to refresh you on how to complete the square. So you're going to write y plus, you can use a box or just space, is equal to x squared minus 8x plus you can put a box there or just space plus 11. And this space here and here is so you can complete the square. All right, now don't forget to complete the square, we look at the bx value, and in particular, we're looking at the b. And in this case, the b is a negative 8. So we take a negative 8, we take half of it, and then we square it. Negative 8, we take half of it, and then we square it. A negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. So we end up with a negative 4 squared. And a negative 4 squared ends up being 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. 16 here and 16 there. Now we did that so we can get our perfect square trinomial. x squared minus 8x plus 16. And we're going to write x squared minus 8x plus 16 as a square of a binomial. So x squared minus 8x plus 16 end up being x minus 4 squared. x minus 4 squared. Okay, now we subtract 16 from each side. So minus 16, minus 16. Once again, minus 16, minus 16. 16's here are going to cancel out. And 11 minus 16 is a negative 5. So now we have y is equal to x minus 4 squared minus 5. Now we have the equation in vertex form. y is equal to a is on the outside, x minus h squared minus k, or actually plus k. All right, step two, let's identify the values of a, h, and k. a is equal to 1. That would be right there in front of the parentheses h is equal to 4. Remember now, this says a negative 4, and our, and our formula says minus 4 or opposite 4. So the negative 4 becomes a positive 4. And k is a negative 5. a is 1, h is 4, and k is 5. Now because a is greater than 0, the parabola opens upward. That's another way of saying that a is positive. All right, so now we know that the graph is going to open upward, and we know our vertex is going to be a minimum. But the first thing we're going to do is draw the axis of symmetry, and we determined that that was 4. So the axis of symmetry is at 4, is at x to the 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We draw axis of symmetry. All right, our vertex we know is going to be h and k, so the vertex is 4 and a negative 5. 4 and a negative 5. So 4 and y is a negative 5. That's that point right there. We're going to plot four more points. 
evaluate the function for two x values less than the x coordinate of the vertex. All right, they chose x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. When x is equal to 3, we end up with y is equal to 3 minus 4 squared minus 5. And that's going to end up being a negative 4. Next, we're going to write x is equal to 1. And that's going to lead us to y is equal to 1 minus 4 squared minus 5. And that's equal to a positive 4. Okay, 3 minus 4, that's a negative 1. A negative 1 squared is a positive 1. 1 minus 5 is equal to a negative 4. Here we got 1 minus 4. 1 minus 4 is equal to a negative 3. A negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. So we're going to plot the points 3, negative 4 and 1, 4. 3, negative 4 and 1, 4. And their reflections, 5, negative 4, and 7, 4, in the axis of symmetry. Okay, now remember now, we picked two points that are smaller than the x value of the vertex. The vertex is 4. Smaller values will be going this way. 3, 2, 1, 0, etc. So when we picked 3, we came out with a negative 4. So we got... 1, 2, 3, negative 4 for y. We chose 1, we came out with 4. So x is 1 and y is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we plot the reflections. 1 away from the axis of symmetry, 1 away from the axis of symmetry. Here we are 1, 2, 3 units away from the axis of symmetry. So 1, 2, 3 away from the axis of symmetry. 